So if you're watching this, you probably have weeks, if not days or even hours before your final A-level exams. In this video, I am not going to tell you the secret formula to getting A-stars for the main reason that there is no such thing. However, I truly hope that this video gives you some good motivation to get your revision done and that it also gives you some confidence as you approach your final exams. Hi, my name is Mario and I am a 17 year old international A-level student from Spain. As you can guess from my age, I am in a very similar situation to yours. We all know that A-levels are important. They are the only real piece of judgment of our knowledge and they determine our future to an extent. What we end up studying at higher education, our future job and our life as a whole may be affected by this in some way or another. But, 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 this should not make you feel bad. Actually, it should do the complete opposite. It should give you the drive and motivation that you need in order to perform, to work, and to do it as well as you possibly can. Because you want to be doing the work and the studying for yourself. No one else cares about you doing well, only yourself. So I find that the best possible mindset for me to have is to think of it as if it was a game, as if it was a challenge, so that I make sure that it truly matters to me and that I will take it seriously. Instead of a tedious obligation, make it seem as an opportunity for you to put work into something that you care about. So once we are clear on the why for trying our best at A levels, now the next step is to actually get into the studying, which at this point, it should ideally be more revision than actual learning. Still, it is very common to feel like you are in a rush to cover all the content and yeah, don't worry about it because we are all there. Having said that, it is crucial that during the time before your A-level exams, you become fully aware about which parts of the content you know and which parts you don't fully know yet. This is quite important as it will help you at becoming more intentional with your revision. You want to quickly go over the things that you already feel confident with and dedicate most of your time to those things that you haven't yet fully grasped. To do this, you first need to identify those weak points. How to do that? Well, you can literally go through the syllabus and spot those points that don't seem as familiar and simply revise them, go through them, learn them. Whether it be by doing practice questions or by testing yourself through flashcards. Once you already have the big image of the content and you are only lacking the small details, it is now time to get on with the practice. The more questions and past papers that you do, the more preparation and confidence you will have when reaching the final exam. Once again, try to focus on those questions that you don't usually get right because those will be the ones that will make the most difference. You can go over past papers and skip those questions that you usually get right and focus on those questions that you don't usually answer correctly or that just don't seem really familiar to you. So yeah, I also recommend you to do a few past papers in real exam conditions before the final exam. Sitting down and doing the paper as if it was the day of the exam and not looking at your phone and doing it in the specific time frame of the exam. This will not only give you the most realistic preparation, but it will also significantly boost your confidence and exam technique, as you will be able to spot patterns in the questions and they will seem more familiar to you and questions will be less of a shock when you get to the final exam. Another way that I use in order to make sure that I test my knowledge is by using Anki flashcards. This is a free digital flashcards app that lets you create and import uh, flashcards, any type of flashcard that you want. I personally am a big fan of Anki flashcards. Uh, I have been using them ever since uh, year 11 at UCC and they are a great way for me to test my knowledge at the same time that I do it in a dynamic, interesting way. It is visual, it is uh, entertaining, it is a good way to make sure that you enjoy studying. If you would like to have the flashcards that I used in year 12 AS and the ones that I am currently using in year 13 A2, then make sure to stick to the end of the video because I have a surprise for you guys. Another thing to take into account is organization and time management. The best way to cover all the content is not by putting seven hours of arbitrary work. It is better to work for short, still focused uh, periods of time, such as 25 minutes over long as hours that will drain you. You always want to know what to work on and what's after that when you get to studying. You want to previously have planned the day so that you just go sit and get started with the work. You can use a to-do list or a time blocking as a way to do this, to apply this. Personally, I have never spent a whole day studying. I always try to do the minimum of 25 Anki flashcards and some work here and there, but I almost never spend more than six hours a day studying. That's my max. For me, it's already good enough to dedicate three hours in the morning 
in three hours in the afternoon, for me that's already enough to get some good progress. This leads me to taking care of yourself. I could perfectly be doing more studying than what I plan every single day. However, in the end, an extra hour when you are already feeling tired and drained uh, involves quite diminishing returns. Basically, most times it is not worth it. I prefer to do a bit less studying and feel energized and motivated, overworking myself too much and feeling drained and feeling quite demoralized. Having breaks and resting is as important as the studying itself. The best way to nail an exam is by reaching the day feeling confident and capable at the same time that you also feel fresh and rested as these last two will give you the clarity of mind that you need in order to do well in an exam. Last but not least, I find that during this time of intense studying, it is really important to do other things apart from studying, to relax every now and then, to stay sane. For example, doing exercise really helps disconnecting from your studying and also having a clearer mind. Personally, I set myself a minimum of uh, going one day to the gym and doing 30 minutes of static bike throughout the week. I am very strict with myself because I seriously believe that a right body means a right mind. Also, socializing is really important for your mental health. From just calling a friend between your study sessions to properly hanging out. This helps so much in feeling content with yourself and also feeling more refreshed when you get back to the studying. So as a way for me to thank you guys for watching up to this point of the video, uh, I wanted to announce that I have just published uh, all my flashcards for physics and chemistry for year 12 and year 13, AS and A2, and they are now free for anyone to download and to start revising them. I know I could be selling these for a good amount of money, but uh, I don't really care about that to be honest. Uh, I just care that people get to benefit from it. And if I share it for free, it will get to the greatest number of people, which in the end is what I want. So, so basically, if you want, just go ahead and download them and import them into your Anki so you can get started revising with my flashcards. And so you make yourself an idea. I use the AS flashcards uh, and got uh, all A's because there was no A star, but I would have got an A star in physics, I think. But yeah, if you want to contribute, you also have the option to do it. Uh, if you want to, you know, you don't have to do it, you can do it over there and just, you know, send any price that you want to and I would highly appreciate that to be honest. Another way through which you can support me if you are thinking about student accommodation is by checking out Amber's student accommodation. I have a link and if you choose to book some housing through that link, I will get some money. So I would highly appreciate that. And leaving that to aside, I hope you found this video helpful and useful and that you now feel a bit more confident about your A-level exams. If so, make sure to leave a thumbs up so that YouTube thinks that this video is worth uh, being shown to more people and I hope you the best of luck at your A-levels. I will be making more videos about A-levels during this following month so if you want to stick around consider subscribing and uh, yeah basically that's everything that I wanted to say in this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!